This war is all hell and horror. I don't see how it can ever straighten out. It's so wonderful just to be alive, but it's also pretty dreadful because there are plenty who aren't. All I know is, if I have to climb back in that bomber, I will beat my brains out on the instrument panel. The landings are going like clockwork now. Men lie on deck, sunning themselves and reading the funnies. While a few hundred yards away, others face enemy fire and possible death. It's surreal. After watching the 7th Infantry Division overwhelm the Japanese defenders on Kwajalein, Sergeant Jack Werner is shuttling from island to island, delivering ammunition and doing his part to help secure the rest of the atoll. On one small island, a company is dynamiting the last of the blockhouses. We have Jap-American translators talking to them, trying to get them to surrender. Then there's a shattering explosion. Rather than suffer the shame of surrendering, they've set fire to their supplies and blown themselves up. There are no survivors. Americans take Kwajalein Atoll. With this one battle, the Allies have pushed the Pacific Front 500 miles closer to Japan and now have a staging area from which to launch a massive assault on the Mariana Islands. The battle is over. Not that I did much to win it. As we pull out of Kwajalein, I make a promise to myself. I will never sit on the sidelines again. We're all wondering what's coming. At their training base in England, Lieutenant Charles Sheffield and the rest of the officers of the 39th Infantry Regiment have been called into a briefing with their regimental commander. D-Day is drawing closer, and tension is high. He paces back and forth just like Coach Ivey used to before a big basketball game. Gentlemen, we are about to embark on the greatest invasion in history. We are going to liberate Europe. Some of us will make it, and some of us will not. But he says it don't make no difference. It's something that we got to do. After a pause, one of the guys behind me says, Colonel, it might not make a difference to you, but it makes a hell of a lot of difference to us. The old man bursts out laughing. We all do. You said the word inspiring? That's a great patriotic thought. I don't think anybody was inspired. I think everybody was asking this, how in the hell did I ever get in this situation? <laughs> and how do I survive? It's 
gotten to be a joke. Each time they wake us up in the night for a mission, someone calls out, it's D-Day, but it never is. B-17 co-pilot Burt Stiles and his bomber crew are roused after getting only 30 minutes of sleep. A chaplain is conducting a special service. Something's up. The officers are all in their pressed uniforms. I get the feeling that we're close to big things. Our base commanding officer says, this is it, this is invasion. You're flying in support of ground troops. And just like that, all our wariness evaporates. on the skin of the plane. Normally, with this weather, the flight would be scrubbed, but not today. Nothing can interfere with today. On the morning of June 6, 1944, Stiles and the entire 8th Air Force are among 11,000 Allied aircraft sent to pummel strategic targets on and behind the invasion beaches. It's a trucking job, pure and simple. But there's nothing simple about it. Plenty can go wrong. The breath is tense in my throat. The roads are clogged with every sort of vehicle imaginable, from bicycles to half-tracks. Lieutenant Charles Scheffel and the men of the 39th Infantry Regiment are inching their way through crowded English roads and streets en route to the rendezvous point from which they will ship out to Normandy. Scheffel and the other veterans will act as reinforcements. A 35 mile trip takes four hours. While the British civilians are waving and cheering, handing up little cakes and drinks, nobody seems to mind that our trucks are clipping the corners right off their buildings as we creep through the narrow streets. Our division is gonna go in the second wave, on whichever beach is the most secure. Waiting to go into battle is sometimes as tough as the fight itself. We're up here cut off from the whole thing by a layer of clouds. All I can see are a few ships shooting like mad at something. But the mist is closing in again. Above the English Channel, Bird Stiles strains to survey the scenes on the beaches below. There's not a speck of flak. I guess all the flak guns are leveled, waiting for our guys on the ground. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the Great Crusade, toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, 
well equipped and battle hardened. He will fight savagely. together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory.